All right, so we're back. Um, in our last video, we talked about um, setting up the randomization for our different planes. We had talked about setting up height uh, for the spawners, height for all our different waypoints, and setting up the uh, waypoints so that we could have uh, the plane either come in from the west, north, east, or south, and then uh, move to the center uh, location and then engage any fighters in this yellow circle. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to activate this gate so that all this logic that we created in the last two videos will actually fire off. Um, and so when we when we first started, we talked about having sort of a dogfight practice area. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take an airfield, and I got this from our airfields, airfield respawner, and we're going to make this a linked entity, and maybe this is where players spawn in. We'll just do this air, air spawn, air spawn, that's fine. And since all these planes are German planes, we're going to make uh, our country uh, United States or or it doesn't matter, right? Something that's not German. <laughs> so United States or Russia, doesn't matter. Um, and then we'll hit OK. And then we're going to go to planes and we're going to add some planes. So let's add, um, how about a, um, I don't know, P-47. That looks good. And we're going to make it unlimited. We hit OK here, but we need to make it an air spawn. So we're going to actually go back to our array of planes. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, instead of on parking, we're going to do air. And we're going to say altitude. Um, I don't know. Let's be really fair to our players. Since they're just practicing, we're going to start start them out really, really high, like 5,000 meters. So we hit OK. And I'm going to go back to it again. And then we're going to go to our weapon mods. And this is a whole nother course basically about weapon mods. But the idea here is that we're going to give our P-47 all sorts of extra ammo, make them basically dogfighter-y. Oh yeah, he gets a gun sight for sure. I'm not sure what that M-29 is. I think that's the, uh, I think that's the uh, Bendix. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's Bendix. And then he gets the fuel, that looks all good. And their fuel level, sure. You know what, no, we're gonna make it less, 0.8, that's fine. All right, so now <laughs> he's got extra ammo, he's got the gun side, he's got the Bendix, he looks good. And he starts in the air, perfect. All right, um, and of course you can add more planes and so on and so forth, or clone this guy. Maybe we have like a Spitfire in there, sure, Spitfire looks good. And uh, maybe the Spitfire has, you know, not that, yeah, nope. Yes, the rest looks good. I thought there was a, ah, oh yeah, the gun sight. There we go, looks good. What is this one? Mirror, we don't need no mirror. We don't need to see behind us. Perfect, okay, so here we go. We got two allied planes. Now, um, player spawns in, and we want to set off this event. So what we're gonna do, um, oh, another thing that we need to do too is set the rotation so that when they spawn in, right now the, when the players spawn in, they're going to start flying to the north, and we don't want that, right? Uh, so we're going to go right here into orientation, we're going to set it to the east. You see now when the player spawns in, they're going to head towards this uh, section. Um, so let's set up an event that says, hey, when a player spawns in, um, uh, fire this gate, basically. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, air spawn. We're going to right click object menu. We're going to say on plane spawned in and we're going to make a connection right here. Now this is good and bad. Good because when a player spawns in, it fires off this gate. When this gate fires off, it randomly chooses a time and then it randomly spawns in a, a plane and then that plane randomly spawns in one of these 16 locations and so on and so forth. However, let's say that I spawn in, Bob spawns in, Susan spawns in, Mr. Skeleton spawns in, right? All these people spawn in. Every single time that happens, this is going to fire off and it's going to spawn in a new plane. Next thing you know, you got 20, 30, 40, 50 planes in the air and that could be a real big problem. Um, we don't, you know, and when I say big problem, I mean like server performance problems, right? Because there's just too many AI uh, because everyone just keeps spawning and maybe they die or maybe they wanted to change planes, right? Maybe I spawned in like three times on purpose, um, you know? Uh, so what we need to do is like limit the amount of times that this could happen. So um, we could do this a couple ways, but the way I'm going to do it, is I am going to 
uh, break this connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our error spawn. We're going to go back to our object link. We're going to delete a whole outputs. And so that's going to break that connection. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our MCUs and we're going to go to timer. And um, we are, uh, let's see, we need to activate. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to say, you know, this gate is either active or deactive. It's either the gate is either opened or closed. And if it's open, then we're going to allow more stuff to come in. And if it's closed, then we're going to not allow stuff to come in. So we have a deactivate, a trigger deactivate, and a trigger activate. A timer. Uh, let's see, we need another timer, I believe. And um, I think that should be good. Um, so what this is going to be, this is going to be another gate. So we're going to do gate. And this will have our connection from our air spawn that we were talking about a second ago. So we'll say, um, what is it? On plane spawned to our gate. All right. And then the gate will fire off our deactivation. So um, this the air spawn pulses the gate. The gate pulses our deactivate. And then our deactivate actually will pulse the gate again. So you see how I have like an X that means that this is immediately going back and forth, right? It's, and this gate now is completely deactivated, right? As soon as a player spawns in, this gate is deactivated. However, this gate is also going to pulse this timer. And we're going to change the time on this timer to like, let's say, and we need to make sure that it's longer than any of our delays we created here. Remember we added the delays on the first video? Um, and our longest delay was a minute and a half. So this delay needs to be longer than a minute and a half. And so I'm going to do, we'll do five minutes. And I'm going to go in here and change this to five minutes. And this five minutes is going to pulse this activation. And then this activation is going to pulse the gate. And so the idea is here is that the first player that spawns in will activate this gate. The gate will immediately deactivate itself, but it will also uh, uh, pulse this timer, which will wait five seconds and then pulse the activation to reopen the gate, basically. Now this gate will connect to this gate as well. So if <laughs> the first person spawns in within five minutes, will pulse the gate, which will in turn pulse this and set off the events to fire off our, um, our spawner to spawn in one of the random planes. However, another person spawns in within that five minutes it won't matter this gate is closed right it doesn't open until five minutes later so the next person spawns in no new plane however five minutes later new person spawns in fine we're going to spawn in a new plane and spawn in a new plane and spawn in a new plane um, so uh, we could still potentially have problems um, and those problems are uh, related to like well you know what happens 30, 40, 50 minutes from now when we have 10, 15 planes in the air um, and they never go away, right? They're just circling in this attack area. Maybe they never run out of fuel or nothing like that. Um, so what we could potentially do is we could have like a, a kill all message. And basically the idea here is that when the um, when there's no players anymore, when players stop spawning in, then... Um, then we just get rid of all of the planes. And so what we can do is we're gonna need an, uh, another timer just uh, for this. And so we're gonna do timer. And this is going to, uh, we'll change this to like T20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, right? So if there's no players in 15 minutes, we'll change this to 15 minutes. Um, and we're gonna connect the, our air spawn to this. So we're gonna right click, and we're gonna do another on plane spawn to our 15 minute timer. Now the cool thing about this is every time a player spawns in, this fires again. So if it was at 13 minutes and a new player spawns in, well, we just reset the timer on this to back to zero. And when another player spawns in, it resets the timer and so on and so forth, right? So uh, with this 15 minute timer, we can con actually connect this to our uh, deletion under our edge cases over here. So I'm gonna go back to this edge case. And I'm going to right click it, ungroup, and I'm going to connect it right to our delete. And so remember, this deletion deletes all the planes that are in the air. So there's, if there's 15 of these guys in the air, then they're deleted. 
right? And the reason there would be 15 is because a player spawns in, another player spawns in, another player spawns in, and so on and so forth, right? So, but we'll never have more than one plane every five minutes. So we'll go ahead and regroup these guys back up as edge cases, edge cases. And uh, remember, this is where they're going to run away. So we'll have that way over there. And it looks good. So now we have our plane spawns in every five minutes. And if you want to change that, by all means, we have our planes that you can change as you see fit. Uh, they are going to come in at a random location, move to a random location, and they come all to the center attack area and fight any players that are inside the circle, which is awesome. And um, if the uh, players don't spawn in after 15 minutes and we delete everything, no big deal. So this is a great dogfight type mission. And we'll go ahead and save this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, another um, mission uh, with another type of input for, like if you're doing a mission-based stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab these guys. I don't need this. This is more for our, um, for our dogfight type mission. So I'm going to grab all of this again. And I'm going to control C and I'm going to paste it down here. It's going to take just a second. It looks good. All right, so now let's say we have a uh, co-op game. So maybe we have like, I don't know, I'm just choose aisle choose again. All right, we have our player one and he is, you know, United States. He's enabled, he's in the air, he's cooperative start. And remember, if you do cooperative start, you do not turn on, you do not set this to player. So we'll leave it at normal, looks good. Uh, and then he starts, what, 500 meters in the air, something like that. Then we got player two, player three, and player four. So this is going to player two, player three, and player four. And what we'll do is, of course, they're slightly staggered, right? They're a nice little V formation. And we're going to target link them to player one. And what this does, um, and this is sort of a new topic, but the idea is that uh, whatever player one does, if there are no player two, three, or four, they're sort of children of player one. So if the parent does something, these children will do it as well. Of course, if they're taken over by a player, then whatever the player does. But if there's no player there, then the AI will try to emulate whatever player one is doing. So player one, maybe he has the uh, direction to go to a certain um, waypoint. So what we're going to do is we're going to do waypoint here. And uh, we'll make this, you know, media priority is fine, area 200, speed 500, it's fine. And we are going to object link the plane. And we are going to give that a, um, we got to pulse it, right? So right now this waypoint is not active, right? It does say, hey, which plane, am, which plane is supposed to go to this waypoint? And that is player one. And because remember, player, I only have to do player one because all these are children. But this waypoint uh, MCU is not active yet because there's no pulse to it to say, hey, go, go make this, make that plane go there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a mission begin. And then we're going to have like a slight delay. So we'll do like maybe... 10 seconds. So I have a mission begin and a timer. So I'm going to do times 10 seconds. And we'll change this to 10 seconds. And then we'll have a mission begin. Pulses the timer. 10 seconds later, pulses the waypoint, which says, hey, go to this particular area. Now, because we're dealing with players, players might not know, hey, I need to go to this waypoint. Or maybe they don't have a um, navigation turned on, right? Uh, they have expert mode. But they do open up the map, and when they open up the map, they want to be able to see, hey, I need to go to a certain location. So we're going to add an icon. So I think that's, uh, where is that at? Translator icon somewhere? Here it is, icon. Uh, so we're going to add an icon. We're going to say, hey, um, you know, move to location. And this is and the name here is what the players are going to see. So actually, I'm going to add some spaces here. That's what the players are going to see. And right here under icon description, this is what the players will see when they hover their mouse over the icon in the map. So we say move to location for patrol. Right. And we will change it to um, it's going to be enabled. That's fine. And we're going to change icon type to um i don't know observation balloons that's fine 
It can be whatever you want it to be. And the other thing we need to do too is who who can see this? And right now, uh, neutral meaning players who have not spawned in cannot see it. So we're gonna make it this so because it's a co-op game, or we're assuming it's co-op, right? I'm making the assumption it's co-op. We're gonna say that everyone can see it. That's fine. Um, and this icon is enabled. Now what we want to do is say once they get to this location, right, this waypoint, then we want to turn this icon off. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a deactivate. And um, all I'm doing is saying um, as soon as the player gets to this waypoint, uh, pulse this deactivation, which will pulse this icon to turn this icon off. And so now we can put the icon close to the waypoint. And now hopefully our players will immediately start traveling to this waypoint. And as soon as they do, as soon as they get to this waypoint, we want to activate this, right? So um, we will trigger waypoint and then we'll fire this off. Um, the other thing we want to do too is how many planes do we want spawning in? Now, right now, this is set to just one single plane, right? It is one plane for 60 different locations, but maybe we want to have two planes spawn in. So if that's the case, then we need to duplicate this completely. And the waypoint will fire off not just one gate, but two gates. Uh, the other thing we want to do too is say, once the gate fires, we also want to deactivate this gate so that if another player makes it to this waypoint, it's not going to fire three, four, or five different times, right? So what we're going to do is that same trigger deactivate. We're going to, um, actually, we know what we're going to do is we're going to go here. And we're going to find that deactivation and we're actually going to delete the connection. So I just hit delete key in our target links. And what I actually want to do is I want to give a slight, slight, slight delay so that these gates can indeed fire off. And then once they fire off, then I want to turn them off. All right, so uh, we need a timer. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're doing sort of an event here. So we're saying first thing that happens, players enter this yellow circle. Then these gates fire off, which will set off the chain of events to activate not one, but two planes, because we have two sets here. And those two planes could both come from the north. They could both come from the south. They could, one could come from the north, one come from the south, it doesn't matter. Um, and then once that, once the gate fires off, we're going to have a slight delay of one second, which will fire off this deactivation, which will deactivate the icon, but it will also deactivate the gates as well. So I'm doing a target link to those gates from our trigger deactivate. And so now if this gate happens to get pulsed again by this particular waypoint, it will not matter. These gates are closed. And so no more planes will spawn in, only two. All right, so another thing we can do too is we can say we want the player to move to another waypoint, right? Maybe they want we want them to move right here in the center. So I actually have the waypoint selected. And this is a cool trick, cool, very cool trick. I hold down shift and I click then not only does it make an object link to our plane, for uh, creates a new waypoint, object link to the plane, but it also does the correct pulse to our new waypoint. Um, so uh, the players make it to this waypoint. Let's give them another icon to say, hey, go down here. All right. And this particular icon is actually going to be not enabled, right? We don't want them to see that until they get here. Um, so I'm going to grab this one second timer again, and I'm going to pulse this guy right there. And uh, what do we need? Oh, you know what? Actually, we need we'll do this. We'll do it this way. We'll do one second. This activates everything. Then we're going to pulse this one second timer, and we're going to activate. We're going to pulse an activation, and we're going to activate this icon way down here to let the player know, hey, come down here. Now, technically, we don't necessarily need this waypoint, but the reason we have the waypoint is for the AI, for the AI, um, just in case, you know, there's no player. All right, so we'll uh, we'll save because we haven't saved in a while. And now what we need to do is sort of put the planes into the mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, we only need uh, this bit right here. So I, actually, you know what, let me grab these planes. And we need this bit right here not that guy and we're going to put that right in the center 
So you can see where I'm going with this. And then um, put our edge case way over here and this edge case, same area. And then I am going to grab these planes, do the same thing. And I am going to grab this. I'm going to put this also in the center. And I don't want them to be on top of each other. So maybe I'll do something like that. Just slight, slightly off, right? I don't want them to exactly be. Uh, but I am going to move the uh, command thingy. All right, so now what's going to happen is, is our players are going to fly to here. This will activate those two gates, which will activate two planes in either the west, the east, a northern section. Maybe we'll make them northeast or in the south, maybe southeast. It doesn't matter. Actually, if you want, we can move this over here too, right? Uh, and then, you know, I have my planes over here. And it, where we have these planes, it doesn't matter because, remember, the planes are spawning in at our at our, our spawn points. All right, so the players will fly here. They'll either see the planes coming in from the west, or if they're lucky, they'll, they won't. And by the time the players get to this location, our AI will also have, hopefully, uh, gotten to this location and want to attack the players all right so there there's that that is our uh, mission uh, design so hopefully I've met every requirement we have here in our three videos we have our dogfight practice which is this guy up here um, and we have our mission based one which will spawn in two random planes from two different random locations once a player reaches this uh, waypoint this particular waypoint um, we have random planes, which player, the uh, designer can change at will. And whatever they change here will not matter because it's all about where the spawners are, not where the planes are. Uh, we have different altitudes, and those altitudes are coming from the spawners. We did talk about random patrol points, but I did not add, add random patrol points. But uh, you totally can do that. Um, and and we sort of, I guess we sort of do because we have uh, planes coming in from the east, west, or whatever. Um, but I consider that a random start position, not necessarily a random patrol point, right? So they're randomly starting at a different location. And they definitely have a random start timer. So um, uh, up to one minute and a half, right? So uh, either one second, 30 seconds, minute, and a minute and a half. All right, so uh, that is that. Um, I will save this. I will leave this for um, you guys to dissect, re reverse engineer, use in your missions if you want to. And by all means, I'm not looking for any credit or anything like that. I just want you guys to make cool missions that I can apply to. All right. Thank you for watching. And again, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. See you all later.